As we wait for the release of Dying Light 2 Stay Human, let's take a look at the game's setting. What you're seeing here is the post-apocalyptic landscape of the city, recreated with the help of the ray tracing technology. Ray tracing makes the game more photorealistic and lets us account for details like the angular size of the sun in the sky. That's why shadows cast by objects in the game are identical to what we see in real life. They're soft when far away, like the crowns of the trees, while appearing sharp and clear when close to the ground. Note the photorealistic details of the tower and the natural alignment of shadows cast by the great pillars of the defensive palisade. This is the result of applying global illumination and specular reflections. The building on the left reflects sunlight, while the puddle shows us exact and stable reflections of other buildings. All the details of the post-apocalyptic setting are reflected in the windows and water. The experience is completed by the play of light and shadow on the building's facade. Note the subtle shading created by the ambient occlusion effect, or the reflections in the glass panes that change with the movements of the camera. Openwork structures are a challenge for ray tracing. Thanks to advanced denoisers, the end result is stable, despite the minimum number of rays per pixel. Performance meets fidelity here. Global illumination on the ceiling, specular reflections on the huge matte glass pane and openwork structure, combined with shadows and ambient occlusion, that's what makes this space look so realistic. Ray tracing in Dying Light 2 Stay Human is not just limited to static objects. Within each frame, calculations are made to account for animations of dynamic objects, such as trees, characters, and moving textiles. We hope you enjoyed this short presentation. We can't wait to share our game with you on December 7th.